on this episode, a long-awaited edition. We're gonna add music today. And it is awesome. What about the gameplay, though? That's a future Christian problem. Hi everybody, hi everybody, welcome. I am Christian and this is episode 69 of the Advanced Schmap Tutorial. Nice. Alright, so today we are embarking on a new adventure. We are embarking on a new side quest, on a new chapter in this, in this tutorial series. We have just conquered, I just called it, I just called it, we conquered the uh, the Great Wall of Schmaps. We have established all of the systems that we need in order to make the game. Now it's time to make the game. Before we make the game, we kind of want to kind of do like a test run, make sure that, you know, everything works, you know, just like test our workflow, make sure that all of the tools that we have are kind of like fine-tuned to allow us to do the things. And before we do that, I will, there's some little additions that I want to add. One little addition is we're gonna add music today. Um, so uh, let us add music. Now music is something, it's one of the very few things where I said I'm not gonna make music. I am not a music person. I don't know how to make music. I, uh, we talked about this before in previous tutorials. Um, there's beautiful people in the Vico8 community who are making music, are making uh, tutorials about how to make music. So if you want to get into that, uh, I definitely recommend uh, Gruber Music, who has been making a lot of beautiful soundtracks for Pico 8 and has fantastic tutorials on how to get into music making in Pico 8. If you want to get into that, contact or seek out Gruber Music on, on YouTube and check out his stuff. Um, also, one another thing that is valid to do and something that I did is you just reach out to people that can make music and collaborate with them. And that's what I did. So um, way back, like years before <laughs> today, I reached out to my good friend Sebastian. Sebastian has been making some of the soundtracks to my, to my games and he also was happy to make some soundtrack, uh, a music piece for, um, for this tutorial. And you are allowed to use the music if you are making a schmuck based on this tutorial. You can use that music as well, but you have to provide attribution, you have to link to this tutorial series. Uh, and quote Sebastian. Sebastian Hassler is the name of the, uh, the composer of this music. All right, so um, I'm gonna use a donor card to copy over the music and some sound effects as well. And you can do the same thing. I will provide the card, the final card at the end of the episode down in the doobly-doo. You can just download that card and copy over the music. Um, I will once again walk you through the process of copying music and sound effects to your card, just so you know. Okay, so uh, let's type folder. This gets you this. This is the folder where we we're working on our um, on our soundtrack on our uh, on our shmup, and we are uh, want to open a cow shmup, right? We're gonna open this, and we're gonna open this with the editor. Uh, you can use the normal text editor. In fact, I'm gonna use the normal text editor. There we go. This is our cow shmup. This is our uh, where the music is supposed to go. Right now, there is no music inside. Right now, if you scroll all the way down here, we have just a couple of sound effects. This is, if you open P8 files in text editor, I think we did already do that before. You can see like all the code is in here, but also all, this, all the graphics and all of the sound effects. Again, we have, have just a bunch of sound effects down there. So now I will open in a different window in a in, in text editor, I will open uh, the donor card. All right, so this is my donor and I want to copy the music, which is all this stuff. This is just like very simple data, but most importantly, also the sound effects. You see, this is all the sound effects. I want to copy the music and the sound effects from this cart over. Let's do that real quick. And then copy and just gonna paste it in here. We're gonna select this music and we're gonna replace the SFX block with the new stuff. And I'm gonna save. All right, now we're gonna go load couch map. And let's see.
and now the music loops through awesome soundtrack really like this this uh, arcade anthem thing music is so important for the shmup and arcade experience it has to be like in your face we've been working a lot on this sebastian has been working a lot on this and he did such a great job as you can see something that's kind of difficult to do uh, you can see those pips on the, on the on the on the top here these are the channels that are used by the music and you can see that the last channel is always black there's always an empty channel here because we can always play just four sound effects at the same time uh, and that includes the music so if you the music uses all four channels there's not going to be any sound effects anymore or if you play sound effects then pieces of the music will cut out so um, what sebastian did here when composing this music he made sure that one channel is always free so we can have some sound effects still makes it extra difficult to make the music and I'm really happy with what he created here. Uh, let me see, there is also a second piece that I wanted to also play to you. This is the boss music. Right, <clears throat> so this is kind of like a boss music that we're gonna have for our boss fights. Awesome stuff, I love it. And then we have some sound effects. Um, this is the shooting sound effect. We tweaked it a little bit to make it less intrusive. Um, the shooting sound effect now kind of sounds like a, a machine gun sound effect because we don't wanna just have one sound effect when one bullet comes out. Uh, we might have to have a situation where we press the button once but multiple bullets come out. Um, Sounds a bit science fiction-y, but I kind of want to make it maybe more um, more fantastic and less realistic, you know? This doesn't sound like a realistic gun. Yeah, a little more cartoony, right? This is not an explosion. It sounds like an explosion, but it's kind of like a little thing that we prepared. Something that you can do in, um, in Pico 80s, uh, especially in those um, early in the very first few numbers of the sound effects, you can define instruments which you can use later on. And this is kind of like an instrument that we defined to make the actual explosion sound. This is the actual ex explosion sound. You can see the one here, the green one, means that it is referring to this. So this is the actual explosion. Uh, sound effect number two. Nice and crunchy. We might have to tweak it a little bit to have maybe have more multi explosions later, but I think this is a good start. And then finally, uh, this is the is the death sound. Okay, let us bring these things into the actual game. Do we have a start game function? There is start game. Okay, so let's just like do like very simple music zero. And then let us look for explode. Explode. Um, because here we have the sound effect. We don't want to do sound effect one. We now want to do sound effect two. That's the actual explosion. We kind of change things a lot around a little bit. Uh, and then let me let me see if we have sh sh shoot. Um, it's here, right? So we have a sound effect zero. Let's see if that works. Doesn't it look awesome? It just like it adds so much liveness to the to the proceedings. I love it. There is one problem that I want to maybe fix um, with the sound effects. It's right now. Um, so the way sound effects work, if there's multiple sound effects playing at the same time, um, uh, Pico 8 will pick a channel that is currently not playing anything, uh, which usually goes going to be channel number four. But especially for the shooting, I want us to commit to channel number four. Right. So I think this is. Um, we have to put a three at the end. So zero, one, two, three. So ch channel number three is channel, channel four. Um, and this should make it so that, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it's too loud. It's very loud in my ears. 
This makes it so that uh, the shooting sounds are now only played on channel four, which is the empty channel in our music. Uh, didn't really hear much difference, but I think like later on when we have lots of things happening at the same time, I think that may become more important. Now, we're not gonna do any priority, sound priority kind of things. Um, we might to add them later on. A uh, sound priority means that, for example, if there is an explosion happening, we want that explosion to play all the way through. We don't want uh, then if you shoot that to that shooting sound to cancel the explosion sound because this is something that could happen because we don't have too many channels right and we have lots of explosion and shooting happening um, we need to pay attention to if there's any problems later down the line when we have some gameplay going maybe we need to add sound priority system that may basically says where we personally like the, the the card that we have that our code needs to keep maybe keep track of which sound is currently playing and if these sounds are that are currently playing are okay to cancel or if we should let them play out. That's a future Christian problem. Okay, so now we have some sound and I want to add sound now before we do the test level because of the interviews I did recently. So recently I went through some interviews with some famous Schmuck developers and something that I've heard at least two people talk about is how important music was for the layout of the level. They felt that you know the music quite often gave them an idea of what is happening and and you know what kind of um, uh, what kind of mood um, the level should have. If this is maybe something where more dangerous enemies are coming, more menacing enemies, or if this is more fast-paced uh, um, part of the level, like uh, the the music allowed them to kind of like set the tone for multiple stages throughout the level. They kind of like it it led. Uh, with the mood, right? It's not necessary that the, you know the level is cut to the beat or anything like this, but generally the music helps with the design because it sets kind of like a tone. Um, and so that's why I wanted to add the music now before we do the design of the level because that might help us along the way. Now the problem is of course that in the schedule editor we don't hear the music and I don't think there is a good way of bringing in the music audibly into the schedule editor. I don't think that makes sense, but we can help out there a little bit. So let us go to the schedule editor because we can actually also do some other things there as well. Okay, so now we're in schedule editor and it's like, okay, here we don't hear the music. We don't hear the music, but something that we could do here is we could maybe like when we're scrolling through the through the level, it would be maybe nice if we could see like a grid or something like a like a line that tells us when the next mm, sequence or where the next chapter of the I don't know how to talk about where the next part of the music um, uh, begins, right? Because like if you listen to the soundtrack, there's like the multiple parts. There's like an intro, and there's like a, like a little bridge part that is kind of like a bit quieter. Then comes like the the da 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 da, like the anthem. I would say I call that an anthem, right? And there's like the repetition, like a quiet repetition of the anthem. And there's like this like very like this bass heavy, you know, like more menacing part. And then it loops around. So these different parts of the music, I want them to be visible in the in the in the level, just as a little help. So I want to add grid, like some a little bit of a grid helpers to our schedule editor. Uh, let us do something uh, much simpler than what what I just described. Let how about when we do the draw BG? Uh, how about we just draw the center line? Just to start with a little exercise, let us draw like a center line. Um, let us just draw like a center line here, right? So let us do like a line from 0, 64 to 128, 64. No, this is wrong. Um, to 64, 64, 0. I haven't been coding in a, in a while. 128. And then I'm going to use our favorite color, uh, color number 13 for that. Let's draw this. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is not the center line. This is the center line if, if the X scroll is scrolled all the way to the side. We're gonna see what the, what the actual center is. So, okay, okay, so let us move this around a little. Let's, 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 let's add eight to this. Is, is that correct? I'm not sure, let's see. Does that sound more like a center line? Yeah, that, that seems centerline because when we have our cursor is in the center here, 
than, than this line center. Okay, so this gives us like an idea of where the center of the level is because we didn't have that before. Um, let us do like a um, uh, fill P and let's do, which one is it? Uh, nope, let's just press all the buttons, there we go. <laughs> Let's, 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 let's use this fill pattern for this. Okay, so now we have like the center grid. And maybe something I would do also is to add <clears throat> a line at the edges, uh, or like two horizontal lines at the edges, so we see the parts of the screen that you might not be able to see. So we don't want to put something that is vital uh, in these areas, right? Um, so something like eight, eight, <clears throat> I don't know what the other one is, uh, is it like 128? Let's try that. Okay, so you see this line, oh no, actually it's, it's, a, a, it's more than eight, it's more than eight, wow, okay. Um, let's go 16 then. It's, it should be 16 then. Okay, I'm looking at the left edge. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Uh, let's go 15. So it completely disappears when the cursor is at the right edge, right? So now you can see that this, this left edge now indicates kind of like this area that should be, that might be invisible. Um, now on the right side, yeah, on the right side, we accidentally hit the exact number. Okay, good. So the right line and left line now almost just just almost disappear when you when you move the cursor to the left and right. Cool. So now the sideways scrolling is a little bit. So we know that everything that happens that is important should be happening in these two areas. Um, so let us now draw the horizontal lines. Um, with horizontal lines, it's a little bit difficult because we we don't want to like read the music and get that that information you know, where the line appears from the music because it's it's going to be a whole kerfuffle. We have to copy the music into the schedule editor, and it's going to be like this. I'm I'm going to do a little bit of a hack here. So we're going to call this um, H grid. Uh, we're going to do like a H grid. We're going to do like an array here, and we're just going to hard code the places at which um, those different grid elements appear, right? <clears throat> so let's say um, I know that one is at 78 and I know that one is at 154, 154. I have a list of all of them. Um, so this uh, 178, that is basically um, where like this, I, I call this the bridge part. Probably I don't, my vocabulary for music is not that great, but I call this this part after the intro, but before the anthem begins. There's like this little waiting pattern thing. Let's call this bridge. And then uh, 154 is when the real anthem begins. That that's where we probably want to really crank up the the action, right? So and and. Um. Uh, we're going to go through the rest of the music in a second, but I just wanted to show these two things. Okay, so now going back to here, we're going to do like a 4i equals 1 to hashtag grid. We could do a 4 in all here. Maybe we should, right? Hmm. Okay, let's go 4 in all. 4 in four, um, g in all h grid. <clears throat> and then we're going to say something like, now we have to think about these. Um, where does the have to, so we want the grid to change with the x scroll, right? So the, uh, not the x scroll, the scroll value. So we're going to go local y or gy, grid, grid y position equals um, scroll plus G. Is that correct? Uh, oh, I think it might be G minus scroll. No, it has minus G plus scroll. I think that's that's correct. <laughs> it's a bit crazy. And then we're going to draw a line. Uh, and the line goes from the left edge of the screen, actually to, like from minus eight 
uh, at gy to 128 plus 8, um, gy still, and then 13. Uh, we also want to make sure that the fill pattern is changed. Um, this is going to be, where, where is it? There is this fill pattern. No, use this fill pattern. Okay. Uh, let's see if this works. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work. Hmm. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. There is something. So let me see. Where does that appear, that line? At 78. Okay. And then the next one is here. All right, so let's do a test of this. Let us spawn an enemy exactly at those grid positions and let's see if this will actually, if the enemies will spawn where we expect them. So here, I'm gonna spawn a new enemy. Uh, it's gonna be very, it's gonna be a very prominent enemy. It's gonna be this enemy and we're gonna move this uh, here, over here to the side. So when this enemy appears at the side, uh, we should have um, the intro should be over. Is what I'm thinking. And now let us export. Okay, good. So this worked. Let me add additional additional uh, H grids. So we have anthem. Um, then after the anthem, there is like the second anthem, like the repetition of the anthem, but a bit more melodic. It's not quite as, as in your face. Uh, I call it the melody. Uh, I have it written down 308. And then, and then there is another section, which is kind of like this dangerous, like this bass heavy thing that's going to be the uh, danger music. 359, danger. We might actually write them down just so we remember, but for now it's okay. And then, yeah, and then the, the game, the music loops around, right? So then afterwards we have 614. That is again bridge. Now you might be asking yourself, how did I arrive at those numbers? Well, in the most stupid way possible. I just took the game, I just let the music play and just like, like let the game run and recorded that in, into a video and then later on I, when I, I i just loaded the video into like a video uh normal video player and then whenever something changed about the music i pressed pause and then you could see the scroll value at the top because we're debugging the scroll value and i just wrote down the scroll value. it's very simple <laughs> i'm just not doing this in a tutorial because it's a little bit of a menial task but yeah so these are three loops of this music right uh, let me see how this looks in 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 the in the game. Yeah, uh, in, in in the editor. So you can see that um, this bridge part at the beginning, this intro at the beginning is pretty long. Then this part is a little bit short. This bridge part is a little bit short. Then the anthem is pretty long. Uh, and this is the melody part. And then this is the danger part, I think. And then it 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 starts again with the with the anthem. Let us do. Let us delete all of the stuff that we have so far, but because I don't think this, this is uh, as important anymore. And let us do uh, like a whole uh, another test just to make sure. So let us scroll and see where the so this should be the intro is over. So we have the first guy here. He spawns at the when the intro is over. Then we have another Oh, this is by the way, we Oh, we're not drawing the grids all the way to the edge to the edge. And then we're gonna spawn a new one over here. Okay. Uh, so this spawns at when the anthem begins. Then we have another one here. This should spawn where the melody begins. And then here is where this danger thing. I'm gonna spawn a different enemy here, just like uh, this should be the danger part. I think we should bring bigger enemies in here, just like to, just like to, to clarify. Uh, let's let's bring in here in the center. 
And then here we should loop all the way through. So we're gonna spawn a new enemy here. Uh, let's spawn uh, this blue one, whatever. Okay, export. Now you saw it wasn't perfect, right? It wasn't like frame perfect and we can't really make it frame perfect. It's kind of like this, this problem. You cannot really cut the level to like beat perfect to the music because there's, you know, sometimes there's a bit of a slowdown. It's a little bit unreliable. The way I arrived at those numbers is a little bit unreliable. Uh, when people pause the game, that will throw everything into, into this array. It's, there's lots of things where music and, and the things that you see on the screen will desync if you want to make a game that is synced perfectly to the music, you will have to get into and like actually make things spawn and so forth, react to the actual data, music data, which you can access from the code. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna do like a very simple thing. In the editor, we have this data visible to us and we're gonna create the level so it kind of roughly matches the mood of the music. Right, so this has been going for a long time, this, uh, this, episode, but I want to add one last thing. It is time. It is time to add the autosave. Let us add the autosave. Okay, so the autosave is going to be basically like, um, okay, we're going to have an autosave variable, variable and we're going to set that to true. I want to have it all um, at the beginning of the code. So we can turn it off if we don't want to autosave anymore. And then uh, let's, let me put it inside the init function actually. And we're gonna have a, a variable called dirty. <laughs> if, um, if this variable is set to dirty, if the dirty is set to true, then that means that we want to autosave. The way I, I want to do this is I want every two seconds or so, I want the code to check if, uh, if the, if we change some data, if the, the data is dirty, uh, if, if the data is dirty, we need to save, we need to autosave. Um, and I want to do it like every two seconds uh, and not immediately in the moment where I change the data because I am very nervous that we might run into a situation where we do something bad to the data and that causes the code to crash. And then if that already automatically is autosaved, then we're not, not gonna be able to to load the data anymore. The, 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 our editor will always crash on load. And that's a bad situation to debug or might be stressful to debug. So I want instead, you know, we do our editing, uh, our editing, our editing will manipulate the data and will flag the data as being dirty as we change something about the data. And then every two seconds, there's gonna be a different piece of code that checks if we change something, if we change something, we're gonna autosave. Good, so, um, now, let us here in the update function, uh, here in the update 60 function, this is where we actually do the UPD stuff and so forth. We're gonna do something like if time uh, modulo two equals no zero. So every two seconds, time returns the amount of seconds that have passed. Then, and I'm gonna go if auto save and dirty then and then in this case, we want to just like export the function. Um, uh, let's put it, uh, create a new um, property or a new uh, par parameter in the export function called auto, because the regular saving should be a little bit different from the, from the auto saving. We're gonna see how, how in a second. So in this case, I just want to uh, do export true. So it's auto set to true. And then I want to dirty 
to be false. Like this. Okay, um, now let me set something to dirty. Um, let's say that right here, an update map. Here's where we're clicking on things, uh, on, on, on buttons. Okay, do button is the thing that we're looking do button. <clears throat> All right, here it is. Um, so let's see. Let's when we're creating a new enemy, I want dirty to be true. Uh, just like as a little test. And now when we create a thing, we're seeing the exported. So now it exported. And now it's no longer exports because now the data is no longer dirty. When we create a new one, now it exports. Okay, one more thing. I wanted to. So this big honking exploded, uh, ex export, <laughs> exploded, exported uh, caption here in the center. I don't like that. Um, so if um, we're doing auto saving, then we're going to go if auto, then we're going to do a slightly different message. Um, so we do something like this. The message is going to be autosave. This, this is a little bit of a hack, I have to admit. This is a bit of a hack. Um, the message is going to be autosave, and it is, it's going to be just there for 60 seconds, uh, 60 frames. And then when we're drawing the messages, this is this is a this is a very hacky thing to do. So here's where we're drawing the messages, right? Now this is the debug um, here. Here's where we're drawing the message. So we're gonna go if the message if that's autosave, then otherwise uh, print the message that you see. So if the uh, the message that we're printing is actually exactly autosave, I have a little copy and paste thing again. It it is a little bit of a little little flourish you know um, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm drawing a little rectangle in, in the corner of the screen and then I'm using this special ASCII Pico ASCII command uh, to uh, draw a little icon a little um, safe icon uh, so it's not as like in your face so we don't see like this big exported thing but like little just little icon in the corner Mm, and I have to use this weird encoding, like I have to encode the icon in the text using the P ASCII thing, because we cannot actually use the sprite data, <laughs> because the sprite data is our actual data, right? Uh, so I'm using this instead. And that should be it. So let's try that. Yeah, there it is. There's a little icon in the corner. Because again, it should be seamless. It should be like it should be understood that this is happening automatically in the background, and I don't want to be um, uh, disturbed too much by this by this autosave uh, message. Cool. So let us go, go to the buttons, and let's see which button commands will make things dirty. So this. Um, Edit enemy, right? So this will actually show a drop-down menu that doesn't actually change data. This will delete the enemy. That that, that definitely is something that we want to do. Um, this will actually put the enemy, copy the enemy, but also put it into like a move mode. So maybe we should do that later on. This will also move the enemy. Um, so deleting will make things dirty. Uh, yeah, this will also change the enemy type. We should also select this as dirty when we do that. Um, yeah, this is the menu. This is just a drop-down menu, and this adds the enemy. Okay, uh, let's go to the um, uh, update move. So here's where we're moving the enemies around, and here's where we're um, returning from the moving to the uh, to the update function, and that's where I want to also set um, the data to dirty. Okay, so let's try that. Right, let's pay attention to the icon on the lower right corner. So now I, oops, what happened? Oh, okay, I got it. So I'm moving it around. I'm saying like, okay, now it's, it's being saved. 
moving it around. Saved. Moving it around. Okay, saved immediately. Uh, I want to now copy this. Saved. I want to delete this. Saved. I want to change the type. Saved immediately. Okay, cool. It's working. Uh, there is a little debug thing that I saw there that I want to maybe uh, clean up. Yeah, we're printing the age of the enemy. We don't need to do that. Oh yeah, but, but let's fix the grids as well. Now the grids are fixed. Cool. Let's save this. So as I said, the doggy zones are over. We're not doing any doggy zones anymore. Uh, so we finish this part up. Uh, what is still left? Um, I wanted to maybe do a small pass because now, now we applied this to the schedule editor, but we still haven't uh, touched the brain editor. We still haven't touched the sprite editor and so forth. So I want to maybe move or bring the joy of autosave to all these other editors. So we make sure that all the editors are cleaned up. And there's some little small things that I want to fix all those other editors as well. And then we can start making our level. But for now, but for now, let us move on to this part at the end of each episode where I say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all the people who are supporting the show on coffee.com. And today I wanted to do also a shout out to newcomers, to new supporters on coffee.com. A warm welcome to Weeblebull, Wasco Ivy, and Dr. Boski. And also a big thank you to generous one of donations by Aski Slinger, Malefic Max, and NNSF Aka. Thank you so much for your donations. Thank you so much for your support. This means the world to me. And also, as always, I wanted to answer a question or show something from the community. This is something that I, um, Louis, Louis Chapman recently posted. So I've shown you some bullets that Louis was creating for Calican. And Louis has been doing some work on those bullets. And he had some problems with contrast. So he wanted to share a development or an insight that he had when designing bullets. Um, so what he had was he had a level with a red background and he noticed that some of the bullets that he created were not quite as visible on this red background so he added a dark outline to those bullets to make them pop against the red background and that kind of like fixed a lot of the problems visibility problems that he had with the bullets so doing more passes as as you go as the background maybe changes to make sure that the bullets remain very very visible and prominent I love that work that is certainly something I have in the back of my head when I move Move on and we're gonna actually see everything in action certain something to pay attention to all right guys so next episode bringing the autosave to the other editors and you know cleaning up some stuff see you next time around guys bye bye